Thank you, thank you. Uh, welcome everyone, thanks so much for coming. I'm really stoked to be here. Uh, this today is a talk about using AI with JavaScript. Um, I'm not here to tell you that AI is gonna take your job and uh, I've got nothing to sell you, so we're gonna put those two things aside. I, I really just wanna talk about like coding cool shit with JavaScript. So when you're interacting with AI right now, you, you kind of have two, two ways to go about it, right? You can, you can fetch back and forth with uh, like a cloud provider, an API key. It's my API key is up there. Feel free to use it. Um, or you can descend into the awful hell that is pip pop pipe python 2.73 and then just throwing your laptop into the ocean because it's impossible to python install anything right those are kind of your two main options right um, but like honestly i love javascript um, i've done some wacky stuff with javascript i i built a receipt printer with javascript and i allowed just random men on the internet to send me photos um, <laughs> and they're printed right away, right? And uh, I went as far as to take React and put it on a microcontroller, um, and I drove that, unfortunately, right off the desk um, with JavaScript, you know? Like controlling my old Roomba with, with JavaScript. And while much of the AI world right now is built on, on Python, um, advances in web tech mean that we can run many of these models in JavaScript. Um, and that's mostly thanks to web GPU. So we've been able to do a lot of this AI and computer vision stuff in the browser for, for many, many years. However, now with web GPU, it actually means that they're they're fast enough and, and able and capable where you can kind of take another look at them and go, oh, that actually makes sense to run in JavaScript. So why? Why would you want to run a model in JavaScript? The first reason we have here is speed. So when latency is a concern, do it on device. So this is a little demo that I whipped up um, with a pose detection library. And what it does is it it takes the video and puts the points on my body where my points are, and then I can use a little bit of math to figure out what is the angle of my elbow, and uh, it counts that as, as a rep, right? And I whipped that up in, in probably about an hour. It's unbelievable that you can even do that, and it's, it's running at 60 frames a second. Um, Whisper is a huge library for doing uh, speech to text. And it's at a point now where you're running it on WebGPU, it's fast enough to almost in real time uh, take what I'm saying and, and convert it to actual text and does things like laughing and coughing and, and whatnot. Almost fast enough, I say, because a four-year-old MacBook Pro, still pretty fast, it, it lags up behind just a little bit. The opposite of that is, is text-to-speech. Um, so you want to take some text, and you want to generate some audio from that, it's, it's actually very accessible. Look at this, what, six lines of code? I could make it two if I, if I wanted to. Um, and these slides right here, they're built in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and um, I just built a demo right inside the slide deck where this is a text area, and I can just go ahead and generate the speech. Hello, Paris. I'm a generated voice inside the browser. I sure do love JavaScript. Well, like, that's, yeah, clap, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> like, and there's, it comes with all these voices, and I'm just, I'm literally running that in 1,000 milliseconds. Let's see, Isabel. Hello, oh. Paris. I'm a generated voice inside the browser. I sure do love JavaScript. So that's really cool that it can generate that faster than it can um, speak it out, right? Reason number two that we have here, oh yeah, the... The, the speaker told me, stay on the X. Sorry, I gotta make sure I'm on the X here. Um, reason number two is security and, and privacy. Um, so uploading your data to a random website might not be a good idea, right? So uh, we had Kyle Simpson up this morning, and he talked about, he pretty much used all the same words that I'm using today, um, but he's talking about local first, I'm talking about models, but the same reasons sort of apply. Um, so how many of you have ever needed to like remove a background for an image? So what do you do? You go to Google, you type in remove background free, this shitty little website shows up, and you upload your photo of Kyle to it, and uh, little do you know it's not actually free. They wanted like 
they want to like shake you down to pay for the free one. And, and now, unfortunately, I've given my photo of Kyle to a billion dollar business, and who knows what they're going to do with that now. Um, awful, right? So this is done entirely in the browser with WebGPU, where it's just zapping the backgrounds right off those images. And it's running local first. It runs entirely in the browser. No data is going out to external APIs. It's running, it's faster than if you were to use an external service. And it's better than the one that comes built in with Mac OS. Reason number three, cost. So when the cost of AI becomes almost nothing, new features start to make a lot more sense, right? Like AI is, is getting very, very cheap right now, but there still are lots of things that don't make financial sense because of at scale. Um, so one of them might be um, captioning or, or image generation. So you're using like a Blue Sky or a Twitter or something like that. You upload an image, you're supposed to put a caption or an alt text on it, right? And unfortunately, a lot of people don't do it because it takes too long. And what you could do is you could just use a model in the browser um, that would go ahead and, and caption it. So here I've got a whole bunch of images, and it's firing up captions for all of them. Um, lots of them are very good, but what I would probably do if I was Twitter or Blue Sky is do this in the browser and then, and then say, hey, is this good or not? You can, you can change it a little bit before you fire it off, and it kind of gets you 90 95% of the way there. Translation. This is, is another one, because um, on Blue Sky, when you want to translate a post, because somebody's written it in a weird language like French, um, you, need to, it, you click on the translate post, and it kicks you off to Google. And you have to like, go out of the experience. And, and they're probably doing that, because it's too expensive for API keys for that. And it's too resource intensive to do it all on their server. But you could just do the translation in the browser with, with an AI model, where here what I'm doing is I'm taking an English sentence, and I'm translating it to French, and then I'm translating it back to English. And the output of it looks, looks pretty good. I, I know a little bit of French myself. I'm from Canada, right? So uh, it, it's amazing that that happens, and it's, it's very fast. Reason number four is when the AI needs to be part of the UI, right? There's a lot of cool demos out there, but they're using some like Python thing that pops up and, or they're console logging a bunch of data. And what's the best way to build a UI? Uh, HTML and CSS are, are at least a really good way to build a UI, right? Um, so this hilarious thing is, is something called MediaPipe. And what this will do is it's taking in my live video feed, and I'm piping that video into a canvas element. The canvas element is then processed by the AI model. And at about, I don't know, 17, 20 frames a second, it's detecting like literally everything about me. I'm Mr. Skeleton Man there, but like, look at it. It knows the left and the right eyes. It knows where my nose is. It knows where my lips are. Um, it knows all the points on my hand. Um, quite amazing that you can simply do that in the browser. And, and, and a bonus, it's also doing the background removal for me in real time. That's what that blue is. Doodle Dash, this is a hilarious one where the AI is trying to guess what you're drawing. Um, so what it will do is it will give you a list. Toilet, I was awful at toilet here. Let's watch this a sec. I started to draw the P, and it didn't work. <laughs> but like... This is a prime example of like, how would you do this without doing it in the browser? You would probably be streaming changes, or you may be taking a snapshot of what you, you've done and, and sending that via like a WebSocket to the server and checking it. And if you're playing against people, it has to be in real time and all of that. And this is a great example of it, it just happens absolutely in real time. Let's watch my toilet once more. I can't believe I didn't get that. It got squiggle, no problem. Uh, depth detection, this is wild. Where you just take an image, not, not used with a fancy camera or anything, just literally any image, and um, based on what it knows about depth and, and other photos, it's going to generate either a depth map or a normal map. So what do you do with, with a depth map? Well, you want to look at it. You want to see how it works, right? So uh, this is the Roomba I drove off the desk. And you can do some, it's kind of weird, 
But it's also pretty amazing that it can detect that kind of stuff. And even like if we were to go into this, there's like a basketball on the shelf behind me. It even knows the curvature of the basketball on the shelf if you really get into it, which is, is pretty awesome, especially when you combine this with other things like um, being able to select parts of the image or remove a background, etc. Reason number five, the AI needs to be part of the workflow. So going back to the receipt printer that I built with JavaScript, um, I let, again, random men on the internet send me messages. And I, I, I basically, I took my local server, I, I put it up on a URL, and I said, hey, everyone, send me a message. And I got thousands of messages um, throwing in here. But as you might know, there's bad people on the internet, and you shouldn't let them send you bad things. So how do you stop people, right? Like 10 years ago, I had a, a big TXT file of every swear word out there, but with slang and other languages and, and people spelling things wrong and leet speak, it, it gets through. Um, so you can just grab a sentiment analysis model. And in this case, I didn't do it in the browser. I did it on the server in Node.js. And it will just take a sentence or, or take something, and it will tell you how toxic something is. And then it will also try to um, like put it into like identity hate and obscene. And I, did some, I had some really funny examples for this one, but I decided not to include them because I didn't want to get in trouble. But come see me later if you want to see some weird stuff. Um, <laughs> Um, so, case in point, I, I put this up on, on Twitter. I said, this is why I'm bullish using AI in JavaScript. The models are getting better, faster, smaller, um, and it makes sense in many cases to run them in the client because of cost or speed. And I got a really good reply um, from Martin, and he says, like, yeah, we have a view in a Nuxt app, and we were able to do some sentiment analysis as people type and he basically just like summarized my whole talk here, which is like, we reduced API costs by 70%. That's cost, right? Um, we were able to do it as the user types. That's speed. Um, there's no privacy concerns with that because you're not submitting the user's message to the server before the user has like sort of consented uh, to, to submit it, right? That's the privacy aspect. And the UX improvement was, was significant because he was using it as like a tone check before someone types it in, like, you're in, you know, Stack Overflow, you're an idiot, you can't do this closed. Um, so really nice UX there. So how, how, how are we building all this stuff? Let's talk about the tech behind it. Um, first of all, we have a number of really nice JavaScript libraries that can consume the model um, and allow you to work with them in JavaScript. So Transformers.js is probably my favorite out there at the moment. Um, this is a library from Hugging Face, and they've essentially taken their Python Transformers library and, and not ported it or, or made a JavaScript version of it. Um, there's TensorFlow, MediaPy from Google, WebLLM, um, and Window AI. So Window AI is an experimental Chrome API. So Chrome is sort of like saying, like, what would it look like if the browser had like a standard library for loading in and working with AI models? So it's obviously experimental. It's obviously very early. But it lo looks a little something like this, where you turn it on, it downloads a Gemini model and loads it onto the user system. Um, and the idea is, is that it's not just Gemini, but you could load other models if you want, but also it would be really nice to use the like, built-in one to your user's device. Um, and it's wild, because you simply just say, LLM equals await ai.languageModel.create, and then you can prompt away for free. And all I did is I just dumped the entire body.innerHTML of this slide deck into the prompt, and then it, it did a very good job at summarizing my entire talk, um, which, again, imagine that you could just literally summarize anything or prompt for anything for free on device in, like, I don't know, this took under a second or so to, to generate. Model conversion. So, Models are converted to formats that work in a JavaScript runtime. So Onyx is probably uh, one of the bigger ones right now. It's from Microsoft. And the idea with Onyx is that it, it, 
they convert models to Onyx and they will run in many runtimes, JavaScript being actually two of them. Um, TensorFlow, TensorFlow Lite works with MediaPipe. Those are, are big ones as well. Um, and then there are thousands of models out there that are ready to be used. So like, if you're feeling a little bit like burnt out on programming, go on to Hugging Face, filter, or go look at this list of possible models, and your just mind will start. Like, hopefully right now you're like, oh, I'm going to make something that checks how many times I add salt to my dish with like some vision API or something stupid like that, you know? Um, but like, there, there's all these different categories in natural language processing, vision, uh, audio, multimodal, text, and almost all of the categories that you're used to in AI are covered in the JavaScript land. Um, now, running them. Run, you can run them on a CPU via WASM, um, and that will work in the browser. Um, most of the time, people will throw them into a web worker so that you're not blocking the main thread. Um, but they also run on, on the server, you know, in Node or Dino or Bun. Um, and then they can be GPU accelerated um, with WebGPU. That's that new API. Uh, which is significantly faster. Um, so I asked Ryan in the hallway, I was like, hey, Ryan, like, you tweeted this thing about this, because Dino has WebGPU support. Um, and he, he's saying, like, yeah, like, nothing right now, but maybe uh, if, if somebody's interested, it would be kind of cool to start seeing people not just use the models, that's what I've been talking about so far, but also start to be able to train your own models in JavaScript rather than having to reach for Python. So like, here's an example of, of WebGPU, right? If I'm doing that captioning on the CPU via WASM, it takes about seven seconds for, that's a pretty big image, so it takes seven seconds. Um, but WebGPU, it does it in, in about half a second. That's about 12 times faster. That's significant. That goes from, that's a cool demo, Wes, but we're not actually going to put that in our app, to, oh, maybe, maybe we'll throw that thing in our app, right? Um, Web GPU support, what does it look like right now? So it's in all the Chrome and Chromium versions. Um, it just hit Safari technical preview uh, or technology preview, which is really exciting, which means that it will be in stable Safari in, in probably six months or so. Um, and then, of course, Firefox behind a flag might come tomorrow, might never come. Um, that seems to be the way with Firefox, unfortunately, right now. Trade off. So it's not all amazing, right? There's, there's always a trade-off. The LLMs, they take up space. Um, so you do have to download a model which could be as, as little as a couple megs and as large as, as two gigs. Um, but I look at some of the iPhone apps that I install, I'm like, what could you possibly be in this bundle, you know? Um, currently, Onyx only has a two gig model limit. Um, that will be changed eventually, but some of these like really big, like stable diffusion, you know, everyone's making stupid anime pictures of themselves right now. Those are too big to, to be able to run in, in the browser. You have to often use a smaller version of those models. Um, a paid LM might be better, might be easier. That's certainly a case. Um, and using your user's CPU or GPU leaves much of this experience up to their device, right? You're, you're kind of hoping that they have a beefy enough device in order to support whatever it is you're doing. Um, and then finally, you need to consider battery usage as well, right? I know my kids, when they play Roblox on the iPad, that, the battery just drains right away. So if you're doing a lot of really heavy GPU stuff, you could be uh, sucking that battery right back. So while JavaScript might not be the best language for everything AI, a lot of the benefits, we talked about speed, security, privacy, cost, and doing it right in the AI, it makes it a really good choice for many applications. And quite honestly, the best apps that I am going to make are the ones that I actually make. And I know JavaScript very well, and, and I'm able to make some really cool stuff with these things, which is really exciting for me, and I'm really excited to see what everybody else is going to make with this stuff. Thank you so much.